Hi, I'm Alicia Main. I help animals heal their behavior, health, and end-of-life issues naturally. And I assist them in helping their humans heal their hearts. I am the animal healer. Oh, and did I mention, I'm not usually in the room, state, or country that they're located in when we do our sessions. Join me weekly for Animal Healer TV Live as we explore quantum reality and learn just what's possible in helping animals and humans heal their behaviors, health, and hearts through the quantum energy field. Hey guys, it's Alicia Main, the Animal Healer, and welcome to another episode. Today's super exciting because we're going across the ocean over to the UK. We're speaking with Annabelle Burnell, and she has a fabulous one-year-old large mastiff named Brody. Brody's got a couple behavior issues, and we want to make sure that it's not a body issue. So we're going to do the in-sync body assessment and muscle release protocol today, about 6,000 miles away. So what's going on? <laughs> Biting. <laughs> okay. um, and that is a large mouth, because how much does Brody weigh? About 125 pounds. At a year old? Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If he comes up to me, he wants attention, um, and he will, you know, trample all over me. And... Even if he gets up gently and he's asking asking for attention, but I don't want to continue to give attention after say ten minutes, he'll bite me uh, because I stopped. If I ask him to come in from the garden and he doesn't want to come in from the garden, he bites me. So basically, it's a response to discipline to anything that he doesn't want to do because he is a stroppy teenager and thinks that he rules the world. He is gonna do exactly what he wants and he knows if he bites me, um, I'm not gonna like that, so I'm gonna walk away and try again. And then that gives him more time. The biting is the worst. We got him at four months, um, four months old, and so we started off on just a normal collar for a little while. But then I think he come into his own a little bit, started pulling. We thought, okay, he's going to pull me over. So we switched to a harness. Um, and it was, again, it was a front clip. We had a front clip and a back clip. But that worked for a little while. And then again, pulling, um, lunging at other dogs. And with the other harnesses and the collar as well, I found you taking that full chest weight. He's, you know, 55 kg. And even when he was four months, he was still bigger than most large dogs. And it just got to a stage where I couldn't walk him. I lost my confidence. I had to rely on my husband to walk him and I wanted the dog. I didn't expect to get this massive, bolshy <laughs> dog that just thinks, oh, I can pull you over. If I want to go to that dog, I'm going to pull my way there and trip you over. And he had absolutely no direction. He would walk side to side. He would walk behind, he would stop. It was a nightmare. Pull recommended some other stuff and I was like I don't think that's gonna work and then he recommended the walk and sing and I was a little bit like oh it's all the way in America and is this gonna be just like all the other harnesses I know it's the front clip and it's great it doesn't obstruct the shoulders but is it gonna be more wasted money if I'm honest and on just the same thing but in the end I thought I'll give it a go and one day I put it on him and I said to my husband, can you come with me? Because obviously I still wasn't confident at that point. Aww. And I was like, oh my God, this is great. He can't pull. And you could see he was trying to pull and he couldn't pull. And I was just like, oh. that's what it's given me, confidence. And straight away I could feel that on the lead. You know, I wasn't scared. I wasn't fearful of another dog coming around the corner. I can now walk him. And if we see another dog, I can, I'm no longer scared. One thing I liked was people that we saw in the park um, with their dogs saw me walking down the road with him and were like, that's dramatic improvement. My suspicion is he's probably a little bit out of balance somewhere. He's probably got some possibly like unrecognized tension or discomfort somewhere. 
which when his energy starts to drive upward, he's not regulating it properly. So let's turn the camera towards Brody and I'm gonna do my in-sync body assessment. And what that's gonna look like is, I can literally feel Brody right in front of me. And I'm gonna have one thumb on each side of his head about an inch off of his spine. And I'm just gonna go down his whole back and I'm just gonna check every vertebrae. And I'm. it's also hitting along the alarm points for Chinese medicine. So it also hooks in with all the nerves, all the organs. And sometimes when a body is misaligned, it can affect a certain organ, not that it's damaging it, but just the energy to that organ. And every organ corresponds with an emotion. So my suspicion with him, and it's just a suspicion, we'll check it out. He's caught somewhere in his neck and he's also caught a little bit behind his shoulder blades. So it's like, when he comes up against something that, like you mentioned, right? He gets a boundary and he's like, well, I don't agree with this. This is not my idea. He starts to feel stress. And that stress literally is driving why he's chewing. Now, yes, there are behavioral components, right? We, we do want to shift the behavior, but I don't necessarily 100% I'm not convinced you have a training issue. I think you have a body issue. So let's just see what happens. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, it's just one look at him and you're like, are you kidding? He's hilarious. He's so funny. He has just been barking at my husband for no reason, just He's barking hilarious. at him. All right, well, this is a good sign because when he just put his head down, I had just kind of put my fingers on the top of his head to say, okay, hang on here, buddy. Let me see if I can help you out. So the right side of his head is a little bit higher with the big skull bones. So I'm just balancing it out. So we have a little bit more even because sometimes like when those two bones. Yeah. Where'd you go, buddy? Okay. So I got my hands on the top of his head. Which, like, this is really kind of weird. He's like, I can feel you. And I don't know exactly what's happening, but I know something's happening. And I'm literally like on the middle of the top of his head. Out of boy. All right. And now I'm going to get towards the back of his head. So the back of his head on the right side is also a little bit shifted up. He could have been running, playing. He could have banged his head into something. Just could have been something that happened that stressed a muscle. All right, now I'm at the back of the top of his head on his occiput. Both sides are actually pretty even, but they're kind of pulled in a little bit and they're a little bit tense. So that's when Brody kind of gets into his what would I call it? Like a little bit of a tantrum. Like I want to do what I want to do phase. So when the energy is coming up his back and it's tight into the occiput and that energy, the cerebral spinal fluid can't like kind of flow just like evenly through the brain. What starts to happen is it feels like if something is like jamming at the back of his head. So then what happens is in his behavior, he starts to feel more intense and he starts to become more demanding like i'm gonna get my way so that's opening now we're gonna go to c1 so c1 on his left side is pushed forward towards his ear on his right side is pulled back towards his hip so i'm just gonna rebalance that there we go you see that drop in his head yep it was kind of blocking there also. So he couldn't figure out any other way or any other behavior that was possible except the mouthing. Cause then he would get touch and then the touch would help bring him back into his body. There we go. C1 just went into place. He, he's, <laughs> would you say Brody has a tendency to be a little bit dramatic? <laughs> He flops himself on the floor <laughs> all the time. He's got a flair for the dramatic. All right, C2 is okay. Uh, it's a little tight on the left, but alignment wise, it's in alignment. So that's C3 rebalancing. Is his mouth moving? 
Yeah, it just literally did as you said yeah. it. So now that's C3. So he's, he's like, <laughs> I love this dog. Like, not only is he so responsive, he's just so funny. He's such a character. So C4 on the left side is fine. On the right side, it's pushed inward and like a little rotated in towards the center of his spine. So I'm just opening that right now. All right, so that's C6 and C7, which are fine. All right, now we're going to get into his thoracic. So top part of his head, his occiput, and the first couple vertebrae were definitely out through C4. That's going to make someone mouthier, without a doubt. This is why I correlate bodies with behavior, because again, how long have you been trying to get him to stop the behavior? Since we got him, so November last year. All right, so now I'm on thoracic one. So thoracic one, on the left, it's pushed inward towards the spine, and on the right, it's pulled downward towards the hip. Now, a lot of these things easily could have occurred when he was with his his breeder and his parents and his, his siblings. All right, now I'm on T4, T5. So T7 is definitely off. On the left side, it's really pushed in towards the center of the spine. And on the right side, it's high towards the shoulder. So I'm just going to release that. So this is, I'm just sharing with you from a holistic dog trainer perspective, because I'm not ignoring the behaviors, but I'm going in body first. All of his behaviors are making complete sense to me. So you don't have, this is not a bad dog. He's a fabulous dog, but he's got it. We've just got to align that energy so he can, we can actually really help him unleash his greatness. Okay, so T10 is okay. That's where my sense is at T11. You've got the starting with the stiffness. Now I'm not saying that that's the cause of it. I'm just saying, I think T11 is definitely connected to whatever lameness or stiffness he was feeling in the back leg. Cause that's gonna compress on nerves like T11 on the left where it was pressed down and in towards the spine, it is definitely was compressing on a nerve. That that's was interesting you say that. Blood. How come? That, um, Cause I, I, didn't, I didn't say anything about that. So that's actually quite interesting about a week or so after he had his um, castration, after he was neutered, because he had to be done early, so he had an undescended testicle. He was getting off the sofa, just in the corner there, and his muscle, and his, you know when you could see it, popping twitch. out through the really, yeah. really quick, like a twitch, yep. went, and I didn't quite know what was wrong with him. Obviously, it's the first time he's had a new pain. So he was shaking, and he was like, what's wrong with me? But yeah. It went away within about an hour and he's yeah. fine. So that was T11 on the left. And then while you were talking, I kind of went down to T12, which is fine. T13 is fine. All right, yeah. so now we're on his lumbar. So lumbar one. Lumbar one's good. It's just a little, what I would say stiffer, like a little more muscle tension on the left side. So just opening that, L2, L2, same thing, just a little tight in the center, but it's in alignment. So that's a good thing. So I'm just opening it. So he's got more blood flow. He's got more ease of movement, L3. L3 is definitely out of alignment. On the left, it sort of popped up to the ceiling. On the right, it's pushed down and pushed in. Yeah, sorry, Brody. <laughs> just adjust that for you, buddy. Okay. It's okay, he's happy. Okay, you're okay, buddy. Okay, here we go. There we go. Good job. Okay, so that's rebalancing, and we might see a big... And I'm just holding it open because it was compressed in there for a while, so I could see... 
that could be a source of frustration, right? Because you just feel like a let. If you've ever had like that little bit of tension in your low back. Yeah, then it's a niggle. Yes, exactly. It's a niggle. It's like, ugh. All right, good boy. There it goes. There it goes. Good job. Brody, you look much less like a, um, like mischievous. Yeah, <laughs> it is much a Much more balanced and like, Brody doesn't normally go internal. You know what I mean? Like everything's about the outside. Right now, he's able to hold a space of like feeling and recognizing what's happening, but also not fighting it. Because I'm not trying to address his behavior. I'm trying to help his body, which is helping him breathe better, which is helping the energy flow better, and therefore makes it easier for his behaviors to shift. He's funny. For as big of a guy as he is and as demanding as he gets at times, he really is a sensitive soul. <laughs> He's not, like, all of those, like, outward behavior things, they were a lot of compensation. Because he really does have, like, a beautiful sensitivity to him that's l2 that's opening good boy there's that breath all right i'm just gonna check his shoulders to make sure that they feel like they're even because he's a big guy and he don't, you don't need to develop like imbalances and now i'm gonna go from his chest bone all the way down his belly and there's an energy line that connects right into almost like the umbilical cord. And what it'll do also if his diaphragm kind of got pulled up, if he ever got scared or, you know, if it just kind of contracted upward and never really released the muscles downward, this will help release all of that. So again, he can be taking deeper breaths. Now he can finally relax and be present and know that he has a neutral gear. So I'm down by his diaphragm and it's definitely like a little bit contracted. So I'm just lengthening it and stretching it and dropping it all the way down. So it's back into alignment, like the point at where his umbilical sits. Okay, and just, yeah, there you go. A little bit more up. Perfect. All right, so getting it. And it's almost fully stretched back into its proper place. Good boy. We like <laughs> Beautiful. Brody, you are so handsome. <laughs> right, you are so relaxed, don't you? Fully, fully back. All right, now his hips. All right, there we go. So we got his left hip is rotated a little forward. His right hip is pulled a little bit back. So I'm just going to realign that, which will help that whole lumbar area and his sacrum be able to move more fluidly. So it's not getting caught and sort of tightening up on itself. There we go, buddy. Almost there. Okay, so now that's holding. All right. So now I'm going to just put him in an energy grid. And what that grid is gonna do, it's just basically gonna sustain itself so that where the body had muscle memory or fascia memory of like, well, no, you know, if we're out of alignment, this is what we need to be. Now his body gets to hold this new alignment. And I think you're gonna see pretty pleasantly some shifts in his uh, behavior and some shit like he'll start to tantrum and then you'll just kind of give him that mom look like are seriously are you kidding me and he'll be like oh all right he'll be able to hear you better because when your body's out of alignment you, you you're uncomfortable you're paying more attention to like i don't feel right than what someone else is saying let him chill out for as long as he wants because basically all of his circuitry right now and his nervous system is resetting. So it's uh, 10 past nine. And around about the time that Brody does kind of relax on the floor and chills out. But I think the difference for today is that 
I haven't had any biting. Um, he has showed signs and gone to do it, but since his shift of energy and my shift of energy, I have learned to quickly deal with the situation and it's not escalated into that. Simple things like when he gets in from a walk, he will take a little while to come down previously. I've noticed that since the body work, that when he comes in from a walk now, he's showing those signs of looking at me in that certain way that I'm gonna test the boundaries. I just hold my energy and hold it for a second, but then I also distract and divert. I control that and, you know, now since the body alignment, he comes down that much quicker um, and can listen to commands and almost like he process it, but I just need to give you a bit of time. But that's less time than it would have been before your body alignment. And now you just listen a lot better. A lot better, yes. Thanks for watching today's episode of Animal Healer TV. We hope you enjoyed it. We'd love to hear your feedback on what you learned about yourselves and your animals. We'd also love to hear what issues are you dealing with that you'd most like to see on the show. If you'd like to participate in an episode, please see the link below and share with us the issues that you're having with your animals. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and Insta and please feel free to share with your friends. Join us next week for another episode of Animal Healer TV where we will explore quantum reality and see what else is possible in helping animals and humans heal their behaviors, their health, and each other's hearts.